Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. Thank you so much for joining us for our worship webcast today. Please be sure to check out our website at www.ctkluth.org for more information about our mission and ministry and to find ways that you can join us in creatively bringing God's Word to life. Now I invite you to focus your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we experience worship together. and hurry to the stillness of God's peace from our vain ambitions worry come to Christ to find release come away from noise and clamor life's demands and frenzied pace come to join the people gathered here to seek and find God's grace. In the pastures of God's goodness, we lie down to rest our soul. From the waters of God's mercy, we drink deeply our made whole. At the table of God's presence, all the saints are richly fed. With the oil of God's anointing, into service we are led. Come then, children, with your burdens, life's confused. Fears and pain, leave them at the cross of Jesus. Take instead his kingdom's reign. Bring your thirst, for he will quench them, he alone will satisfy. All our longings find attainment when to self we gladly. We make our beginning in the name of the triune God, creator, redeemer, and inspirer who calls us all together to experience Sabbath and renewal. Amen. A reading from Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. 
When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon the earth, and all the nations learn your saving help. Let the nations be glad and exult, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness, you rule the peoples. You guide the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us blessing till the ends of the earth stand in awe. It is time for our gospel interruption. I have a length of clothesline here. Um, I'd love to be able to do one of those really cool magic tricks where you actually tie a knot in this and then you uh, cut it off somehow, but I haven't learned how to do that yet. But this rope really reminds me of something that happens in our gospel lesson today. It's about kind of rules and regulations that take place that can bind us up keep us from being free. Today, Jesus encounters a man who has been ill for 38 years. We are told that he is not able to walk, and he is lying on steps by a pool. And this pool, every once in a while, will bubble up. And it's believed that once a day, as this pool bubbles up, that the waters are healing, and so everybody will rush down to go into this pool of water that is there. It's expected that you can take yourself down the steps and receive this healing and renewal. But this man has been laying there for 38 years, and Jesus encounters him and says, Would you like to be made well? Which on the face of it sounds like kind of a scary question. And the man says, well, I would, but every time the water stirs up, I'm trying to go down the stairs and people step over me or ahead of me and I can't get into the water in time. The man's understanding of how to be healed and the kind of healing that Jesus is offering him is bound up in his understanding of how to follow the rules or what the regulations and expectations are. But what Jesus does for him is he looks at him and he says, get up, take your mat and walk. And what Jesus does is he cuts through all of those expectations, all of those things which we think are ways in which we can receive healing and receive restoration. And he frees us just like he frees this man. And for Christ's coming to us to break through all of those things which bind us as human beings to show us God's way, we give thanks. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your Son Jesus to show us a new way to help break through our rituals and our expectations to provide us with healing and with guidance. Help us to remember when we struggle, when we forget, that it's not our own way or our own expectation, but it is God's way through Jesus Christ 
which frees us. And for this we give thanks and say, Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the fifth chapter. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew, Beth Zatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who restores us and reminds us of the purpose of the Sabbath. Amen. This week's Gospel lesson is a really great story. It's an adventure story of healing and Jesus being extremely dynamic. John, as he sets this out, puts Jesus at the steps of this pool where healing will take place. And everybody is not focused on Jesus. They're waiting for the pool to bubble up. I don't know if you've ever been near any sulfur springs or any uh, mineral springs that bubble up, but there always has been this sense that the water in them somehow is miraculous. Uh, my wife and I spent some time at a resort that used to be a, a, a lodge that was uh, owned by the Masons, and it had been recreated by this group that would come in and make these really great restaurants and hotels, but they had a fountain that had, was in there that had miracle healing spring water. And you went up to the fountain and you smelled it, and it smelled like rotten eggs, and it tasted even worse. We want to put our faith and trust in all of these things that we think are going to help us. I mean, you can watch TV or look online at all of the miracle cures that are available for anything that you might have. If there's a problem, there's a pill, goes the saying. But we encounter this man who has been on these steps for 38 years. He's been lame. He's been coming here hoping that something is going to change and yet he keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again. And as everybody else is focused on whether the water is going to bubble up and whether they can get their own miracle in jumping into this pool, Jesus looks over and sees this poor man. And he looks at him and he says, Would you like to be well? Now, hearing that question makes it seem as if Jesus is testing whether or not this guy is enjoying his infirmity, is enjoying where he is. But that's not what Jesus is asking. Jesus is looking at this man and asking a penetrating question to his soul. And the kind of wellness that this man is going to receive is beyond his comprehension. So he responds to Jesus by saying, well, yeah, I'd like to be well, but I've been trying to follow all the steps and I can't make it happen for myself. He talks about all the people who step over him to rush down into this miracle water spring as it bubbles up. And We don't know if anybody ever had pity on this man and actually took him down and dunked him in, but we know that whatever medical care he had received, whatever miracle waters may have been sprinkled over him, 
he was stuck in his infirmity. And that there was no amount of ritual that would ever fix him. You and I are just like this man on the steps. There are so many times that we put our faith in ritual, in the way that we think things should be, that we trust in our own selves, our own devices, in order to receive healing of some kind. We treat God as if God is a vending machine. And so we tell God exactly what we want and we try and put in the right kind of numbers or coins or prayers or actions to prove our worthiness and our holiness and hope that somehow God will answer those prayers and show us that we are worthy. Jesus doesn't buy into ritual. Now, Jesus is faithful. He follows all of the Jewish customs, but particularly on the Sabbath, Jesus has a way of stepping out from what is ritually appropriate to really show us what the heart of Sabbath is all about. He looks at the man and says, get up, take your mat and walk. And the man does. The man doesn't even say thank you to Jesus. As a matter of fact, in later verses, when questioned by the authorities who healed you, the man with the mat doesn't even know. But we are told in the Gospel of John that this healing takes place on a Sabbath. And for Jesus to heal this person and tell him to get up and take his mat means that the ritual of Sabbath is broken. Now, the way in which everyone was supposed to experience God's restoration and forgiveness was by obeying the law to the letter. And on the Sabbath, it was no different. From sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, you were to do no work whatsoever. We have it ensconced in the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And so... In our understanding of how we can be saved and how we can be redeemed, we beat people over the head with a scripture stick. Only in the Christian church, we have moved Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday morning. Now, we celebrate on Sunday because every Sunday for the Christian church is a little Easter. It's the day that Christ rose from the tomb, and so every Sunday is a miniature celebration of that time and of that place. But in doing so, we Christians have turned Sabbath-keeping from a sense of awe and wonder at what God has done, a time of restoring ourselves, to just another thing that we have to check off the list. It's business time for us to get God out of the way for a week so that we can appear as if we are good. We go through the rituals in order to prove that we are faithful. Jesus doesn't care about ritual. Jesus doesn't care about what we wear or about how good we look when we show up to church. Jesus cares about what's in our heart. Now, I had an early lesson when I was a kid. I went to my mom and I said, does Jesus care what I wear to church? And she said, absolutely not. So I went to the closet and I tried to pick out the ugliest outfit that I possibly could. And I came back into the hall and I said, I'm ready to go to church. And my mom looked at me and she said, well, Jesus may not care what you wear to church, but I do. So let's go fix your outfit. You see, we do care because we want people to think that we are good. We want people to think that we are righteous. And so we will put little Jesus fish on our bumper or we'll wear crosses in public. But we forget that it's not the artifice that shows that we are saved. It's what's inside. Jesus understands the purpose of the Sabbath. And yes, he is healing this man on the steps of this fountain, not to prove a point, not to show that he is all-powerful, but to show to this man and to us that the Sabbath 
is made for healing and for restoration. The authorities can get as angry as they want to that this man has taken up his mat. But the truth is, Sabbath is made for us to be healed and to be restored. It's a time for us to admit that, yes, we do need healing and we do need forgiveness. And a time for us to experience that healing and forgiveness in community. Now, you may not have time on Saturday or Sunday to spend time with God, and that's okay. Maybe you are watching this video sometime else during the week. And good on you, because Sabbath means that we spend time with God to be restored, whenever it may be. Maybe each day you need a little bit of a Sabbath, a time that you can be restored and renewed. Our culture frowns on taking naps, and we have this whole Protestant work ethic that leaks out from us, where we think that the more that we do, the better we are. That phrase, idle hands are the devil's playground, or playthings, depending on which translation or which idiom you remember. As if sitting and being still is not okay for us. And so we feel guilty. You know, you go to your place of work, if you work at a fast food restaurant, you will hear this all, all, all the time. If you can lean, you can clean. You need to be moving. But this sense of constant motion, this sense of a need to be doing something, feeds right into our sense that ritual and motion will save us somehow. Rituals, motions do not save us. They bring us comfort. Now, don't get me wrong. There is something that is extremely comforting about having a ritual that is in place that reminds us of God's love every week. But when the ritual becomes more important than the God that we worship, we have turned the ritual into a false idol. When our rules bind us so severely that we can't think outside of ourselves, then we need Christ to free us. And this man on the steps is not only bound by his infirmity, he is bound by his expectation of how he should be receiving healing. And we bind others with our expectation of how they should be receiving healing or how they should hear the gospel. Think about it. If somebody showed up in your worship space or happened to plop down next to you on the couch, what kind of things could they do or say or look like that would make you feel uncomfortable? What would they say or do that might make you question whether or not they belong in your worship space or in your worship community? And this is where Jesus comes like a pair of scissors to chop away at all of those expectations, all of those rituals, to free us so that we can love and that we can experience love and redemption and renewal. There is nothing better than coming to the communion table on, on any given Sabbath day whether that's in the middle of the week as you drive through at our congregation or whether you walk up to the table on the weekends. That is one of those places where, yes, we celebrate the ritual, but it is not about the ritual itself. It is about God showing up in surprising ways, of Jesus being present in the meal, in, with, and under the bread and the wine turning ordinary bread and ordinary wine into something extraordinary which feeds us and renews us and reminds us that we are forgiven. We get to hold Christ in our hands to eat and drink of the one who came to free us to begin with. But even celebrating communion cannot be more important than the call that we receive to love and forgive as we have been loved and forgiven. We cannot narrow the scope of who we want to experience God based on what they look like or based on who they are. 
we are called to welcome and to see others as Christ sees this person on the steps that so many others didn't even deem worthy to notice. That in their hurry to serve themselves, they would step over until they achieved what they thought they wanted through the practice of ritual. We are called to break free from all of these things which bind us, our sense of self-righteousness and self-worth, and allow Christ to free us. And in doing so, we no longer have to worry about all of the artifice that surrounds us, about whether or not we appear to be good Christians. Because it's not about appearances. It's about action and love, as we talked about last week, and continues to be so. That Christ frees us from our dependence on needing to do something in order to receive healing and salvation and comes to free us by doing the work for us. Jesus doesn't make a big show of healing the man on the steps. He uses seven words. Get up. Take your mat. Go home. It's amazing. And the man does. Later on, as the scripture passage goes on, the man will not even be able to identify Jesus or what Jesus has done. And unfortunately, many of us are like that man. We so take for granted the goodness that we receive from God through Jesus that we forget to give credit. We don't understand how God continues to be at work in the world, guiding us, leading us, saving us, and inspiring us. Instead, we think that we have done all of the work. And that is where Christ's grace comes in again, to free us and to work to open our hearts and our eyes to the ways in which we are also told to pick up our mat and go home, to be restored and renewed, to experience rest in the Sabbath and not make it simply a ritual is a challenge for all of us. Because it is hard to take breath. We even frown in our culture on taking naps in the afternoon because people are viewed as lazy. But whatever you need to do to re-energize yourself, if you are feeling burnout, if you are feeling worry and doubt and fear, spending time with God is never, ever a waste. It is always a time to be renewed and to break free from those things which may be binding you. And in spending that time with God, hopefully you and I both can experience some of that freedom in Christ that we have been given. To know that it's not rituals, it's not prayers, it's not even whether or not we have enough faith. It's simply trusting in God's goodness and the promise that God gives to us to Jesus Christ that continues to free us to be ourselves, to admit when we fail, and to come to God for healing and restoration time and again. That is why setting aside a time in Sabbath is ensconced in the Ten Commandments. It's not something we do to receive forgiveness. It's something we do to experience God's grace and love and renewal and healing. And in doing so, it no longer becomes a ritual, but it becomes a place where we can be filled and restored and eager to go out into the world and do the hard work of the gospel. And for that, we are grateful that we are freed in Christ to go and to serve and to love without having to worry about ritual or expectation or what the next steps might even be. And so we say thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise.
He's the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Praise the one true love incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose for many, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Praise the one redeeming glory. Praise the one who makes us one. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide leaders, pastors, deacons, and all who follow you in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give an increased and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accompany, accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let the beauty of rivers, streams, ocean fronts, and lakes remind us of the promise of baptism and our call to welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
Thank you so much for joining us for worship this week. Please be sure to check out our Facebook page and to like us so that you can keep up to date on our most recent mission and ministry activities. A challenge for you before you go, I would like you to think about ways that you might experience some Sabbath during the week, some ways that you might spend some quality time with God to be restored and renewed, whatever that may look like. A 20-minute nap, a time of prayer, reading some psalms, whatever can help you be still and know that God is God will be very beneficial for you and for me. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who Bless the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one.